when I tell my friends and colleagues about dogs which are able to detect COVID, many of them will say, what are you talking about? We started the dog detection project as a community service initiative to see if we could train our beagle colony, some of the dogs of our beagle colony, to do medical detection. And when the COVID-19 epidemic started, this seemed to be an ideal opportunity to see if we could train our dogs for COVID detection. In the early stages of the pandemic, the head of the vet school drew to my attention what this whole initiative with uh, training beagles possibly to uh, be engaged in sniffing for COVID and it was an extremely exciting idea and offered my support and because we needed to raise some funds for the vet school um, I suggested that we should set up a trust. These dogs are on hills so that they can do their jobs and that they can stay healthy and that they can also have a long and happy life. These are working dogs, so it is very important to keep them in optimal health and fitness, and this is why the correct nutrition is so important to us. We are very fortunate to have sponsorship from Hills, and they supply us all the food according to these dogs' needs. What we're doing with this detection project is we've started as a pilot project to establish our methodology and to validate the tests that our dogs are doing to ensure that they really are detecting COVID and not indicating anything else. We collaborate with a number of other universities across the world where they have also started training dogs as for COVID detection. We have eight dogs and of these eight, five have turned out to be suitable for detection training. So what you do is, is you get that dog to a, sense where he, of to a sense where he is performing a certain act. And if that act is correct, you reward him instantly for that act. At this stage, we are concentrating on positive reinforcement. When a virus enters a cell, in this case a human cell, the interaction between the virus and the cell produces some volatile compounds. Volatile compounds are compounds that are spread in the air. And these compounds are excreted by the human body for example, in sweat. Um, it has been found that the COVID virus produces a specific volatile compound that the human body secretes in their sweat. And it's these samples that we're using to train our dogs. Dogs are able to sniff far more than humans can. Um, dogs have got over 300 million smell receptors compared to humans who have about 4 million. Also, the anatomy of the dog's skull um, the nasal passages are a much larger volume of crisscross, a crisscross arrangement of tunnels and this allows the air that they sniff in to have a big surface area for these volatile compounds to find a, sense, a smell receptor. Um, also, the dog's brain devotes 40% more space to smell than the human brain does. I think it's important to understand that the dogs aren't exposed to any COVID virus and nor are the handlers. As a vet school we are very concerned about animal welfare and we uphold the highest standards of animal welfare according to the World Organization of Animal Health Guidelines. Before we started this project we got complete ethical clearance which is a very long laborious process before we were allowed to use these dogs for this pilot project. Our country depends to a certain extent in terms of the income, economic activity on tourism. So we thought that if we can make use of the dogs to be at the airport, for example, and screen the people who are coming in, we will instill confidence in the visitors and they will feel like coming or continue to come to Namibia. It has been extremely successful. We are very, very pleased with our preliminary results, which are around the 80%, 90% success mark. Once our pilot project is finished and we have validated our tests, we would offer a training service to the rest of the Namibian community.